Hello and Namaskar. This is Simran Singh. Welcome to NCRT's live interaction. You all are watching us on PM Ezodia channel number twelve, or you might also connect with us through our YouTube channel. That you all know it is NCRT official. Now it's around three PM on your watch, and it's time for a special session of English. The session will run for entire one hour. If you have any of the questions, do reach out to us in the comment box of NCRT official. So in this particular session, what we will discuss about? Well, it is all about appreciating poetry. My mother at sixty-six by Kamla Das. Obviously, the subject is English, and the entire session is for class twelve. So let's get to know the expert who will be joining with us in this session. She is Miss Jyoti Khaju. Namaskar, ma'am. Namaskar, namaskar. Welcome to NCRT. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am is yes. the NCRT expert and has joined in from Jodhpur. Viewers, if you have any of the questions, our comment box is all for you. All your queries and questions are welcomed in the comment section. Apart from that, there is a contact number on your screen, so you may call us at eight eight zero zero four four zero five five nine. Besides, the session is running on PME with their channel number twelve. So, for class twelve, our official mail ID is again on your screen, so you may write to us at. ddh dot class twelve at the rate c i e t dot n i c dot m. Yes, Miss Jyoti, over to you. We would over to you, and we would like to know from you what all we will be discussing in this particular session of English. Namaskar. As you already know, my name is Jyoti Karju, and I am a lifelong student of the English language. I am from Jodhpur. Today we will be discussing how to appreciate poetry. and with specific reference to my mother at 66 by kamla das but because aapko sabko maloom hai covid ka season chal raha hai covid 19 ki jo language hai because this is an english language session covid 19 ki jo language hai that has had a very negative psychological uh, implication in all of us so hum logon ne socha it's not me this is copyright by the ww impact wales they said we should not use the word lockdown because it gives us the feeling of being imprisoned threat to personal liberty and there is an authoritarian control and coercion so supporting alternative is current restrictions and the moment we say current restrictions temporary change to the way we interact and of course we are interacting beautifully through zoom through live channels and it suggests agreement on both sides and this is language The other thing is we use this high threat language known as social distancing. We say like that, like we've been rejected by society. Instead of that, if we use the term safe relating, we focus on relating to others and inclusion. Safety rather than distance is the emphasis. The third thing we use the term new normal, but this is not the new normals because that tells us that our lives are disconnected forever. ये एक protection phase है. abnormal society but it is a, it is a temporary solution and safety and continuation of life is the focus and also we often use the word self isolating this is high threat painful removal from social contact being alone loneliness depression no this is a pause of contact human connection and social contact has been temporarily suspended and focus is on protection not removal from society we will now begin appreciating poetry by kamla das my mother at 66 agar hum topic dekhte hain jo hame mila hai appreciating poetry kamla das my mother at 66 so my first point of interaction is what exactly do you think is the term appreciating to appreciate poetry so appreciation means when we recognize or we enjoy good qualities of someone or something you can appreciate the orange color on my screen you may appreciate the yellow or you may appreciate weather you may appreciate nature in this context we have to see the good qualities of poetry and poetry appreciation refers to having that, to have that attitude about poetry so you look at the good things and also there isn't one single reason why people enjoy reading poetry or they enjoy poetry it could be because they enjoy the rhythm that the poet establishes with the words so here if you notice the important word is rhythm then what exactly the concept of poetry can mean anything you want it to mean 
and it arises from the fact that poetry requires a special reading. Kamla Das ki jo ye poem hum aaj karenge discuss, it is not, you know, a proper poem. It doesn't have a rhyme scheme. One reads a piece of prose such as a newspaper article rather quickly, looking for basic pieces of information. Whereas poetry does not have any basic pieces of information. One single word in a poem could mean 20 different things to people. That is the concept. And each time you read a piece of poetry or you read a poem, you are able to infer a different meaning altogether. Reading poetry, therefore, requires more time and close thinking. And the experience of reading poetry is an event that must be severed. It must be enjoyed. You should love to enjoy poetry. And the, you have to understand, one has to understand the meanings of metaphors, images, similes. And there are very many poetic devices that poetry has. And they have to be thought of and determined in order to appreciate and understand the text of a poem. And therefore, usually in a poem or in a piece of poetry, questions do not say, what does the poet mean? The question is, what do you think the poet means? Everybody is entitled to his own interpretation of the poem. And we have had this very, very famous poet Wordsworth. Aap logo ne zarur padha hoga. Daffodils to sabko yaad hogi. And Wordsworth says, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. So poetry ke liye jo teen char cheeze which are important, there has to be a spontaneous overflow of emotions. And the emotions are usually, again, they are usually recollected in tranquility. So poetry may spontaneous overflow hoga or bhavnaye jo hai wo flow karegi. Isi bhi poem ko ya a piece of poetry appreciate karne ko, it's very important that we must remember that every word in a poem will have the original meaning and also a different meaning. So the original or explicit meaning of the word, ka, that is known as the denotive meaning. And the word additional meaning le leta hai, that is a connotative. And a other definition of poem ka hai, that it is an artistic representation of what it feels like to experience the emotional life of a human being. But of course, uh, it says emotional life of a human being. Some of the best poems have been written on the rainbow or on the daffodils. There is also a poem on the caterpillar or William Blake's The Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Burning Bright in the Forest of the Night. Zaruri nahi hai, but you have to feel the emotions. Right and wrong explanations and often more than two levels of meaning. Also, life experience and understanding and all poetry requires special reading. So these are the six ideas we need to remember to understand and appreciate poetry. Now, to appreciate actually means to evaluate and to analyze. I'm talking of appreciation of poetry. So appreciate means to evaluate and analyze. So we have to do two things. We have to appreciate or we have to evaluate and analyze. So the first thing that comes to mind in appreciation of poetry is the genre. And the word genre means category. Every poem has to have a distinct feature. So for example, a sonnet is a poem of 14 lines, which is divided into three quatrains and a couplet. And sometimes a sonnet is divided into an octave and a sestate. So sonnet ke liye zaruri hai ki there have to be 14 lines or ya to Three quatrains and a couplet hoga yani teen stanzas of four lines and one stanza of two lines. Ya, it could be an octave, which is an octave is a, uh, is a stanza of eight lines and a sestet is a stanza of six lines. Uske alawa, a poem could be a ballad, an elegy. Now, an elegy is a song of death. And you would all wonder, how can we have a song of death? It is usually a poem that celebrates the death of somebody big. Or it could be, you know, talking about the achievements of somebody big. Or then there is an ode, 
there is a lyric, there is a dramatic poem, or there is a dramatic monologue. So these are all different genres of a poem. Jo poem hum karenge aaj discuss detail mein, Kamla Das ki, My Mother at 66, that has 14 lines, period. But at the when we start studying, you will realize that in spite of the fact that Kamla Das's poem has 14 lines, it is not a sonnet. Then all poems know, usually poems have a rhyme scheme. It could either be A, B, B, A, or A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B, etc. Jesse, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over bales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. So, it's me allowed crowd hills rhyme kar gaye. However, some poems are blank verse as well without any rhyme scheme. The present poem, the poem that we are going to discuss today, Kamla Das's My Mother at 66, has no rhyme scheme. But I, at the beginning, I told you it has got 14 lines. Every poem, every piece of poetry, whether it is has a rhyme scheme or not, usually has imagery. Now, imagery is poetic devices. One is a simile. Now, what is a simile? The word simile is same. So it refers to a comparison as white, as snow, as black, as coal, as brave, as a lion. Ye simile ho gai. Or isi mein, if we remove the as, it becomes a metaphor. She looked like snow, kahenge, simile. He fought as bravely as a lion, simile. He was a lion in the battle, metaphor. So simile and metaphor quite similar. Then you have personification. Personification is when non-living things are giving, are given the, the, the features of a live person. This poem may I got trees sprinting, trees are running. Then there is repetition, there is pun, there's oxymoron, and there is alliteration. Now all these figures of speech form part of the CBSC curriculum. Alliteration, thoda sa discuss karte. Alliteration is a poetic device in which usually, again, there's stress on usually, each word or syllable of a line, group of lines or verse section begins with the same sound. Frail fear, frightened fear, I felt the fear. So felt and fear. Then also the language style, it includes the use of figures of speech, rhythm, word length, number of lines, images, senses. All these are figures of speech. So there has to be awareness of all these concepts to appreciate poetry. Then also the tone of the speaker, the narrator or the poet. So, or usually, we assume that the poem is written by the poet, the poet is expressing the thoughts of the or it is expressing the, 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 the feelings, the emotions of the poet. Sometimes, it is not the poet who is speaking. The poet is doing the writing. It could be the views of the speaker or the narrator. So, the, taint, the tone could be exuberant, absolute happiness. It could be fearful. It could be festive. A fearful or festive man is because it becomes an alliteration. Hopeful, the poem could show optimism, mysterious, ominous, provocative. Ye sari tones jo CBSC me class 12 me course me books hai, uh, class 12 ke course me poems hai, each of them has a different tone. So the reader or the learner who is studying the poem from the exam point of view to appreciate it. He should be able to recognize the tone. Uh, now we come to Kamla Das's My Mother at 66. As the name tells you and the picture on your screen tells you that Kamla Das is an Indian poet. And Kamla Das is an Indian poet who writes in English. Kamla Das wrote poetry in English under the name Kamla Das. She wrote 
प्रोज इन मलयालम कमला दास ने अपना प्रोज मलयालम में लिखा है अंडर द पेन ने माधवी कुट्टी उनकी पोएम जो हम डिस्कस करेंगे माय मदर एट 66 ये जो इमेज आप देख रहे हैं आई एम श्योर इट स्ट्राइक्स यू इट इज द डॉटर होल्डिंग द हैंड ऑफ द मदर वाइसे वर्सा इट्स नॉट द मदर होल्डिंग द हैंड ऑफ द डॉटर यूजली इमेजेस में होता है इफ यू सी द पर्सन हु इज गाइडिंग इज द डॉटर माय मदर एट 66 बाय कमला दास कमला दास का जैसे मैंने आपको बताया हब मलयालम पेन नेम वाज माधवी कुट्टी शी इज एन इंडियन ऑथर शी रोट ओपनली एंड फ्रैंकली अबाउट द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ बीइंग एन इंडियन वुमन एंड शी वाज पार्ट ऑफ द जनरेशन ऑफ इंडियन राइटर्स हुज वर्क्स सेंटर्ड ऑन पर्सनल राधर देन अदर एक्सपीरियंसेस हर शॉर्ट स्टोरीज हर पोएट्री हर मेमोयर्स हर एसेस brought her respect and notoriety in equal measure she wrote in english like i said mostly poetry and under the pen name madhavi kutti she wrote in malayalam in malayalam she wrote uh, prose and she was born in kerala as is clear now i would request you to look at the poem just look at the poem i've taken this screenshot from the ncert you just have to look at the poem and answer this question yourself this is from the ncert publication what does the form look like to you only the form you don't have to answer any question you could put it in the comment box ye page maine ncert ki jo book hai wahan se maine ye page liya hai अगर आपको कुछ स्ट्राइक करता है इस पोएट्री के बारे में इस पोएम के बारे में तो राइट इट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स दिस इज स्लाइड 18। आई थिंक इफ आई ट्राई टू आंसर इट मैम देन इट इज जस्ट अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर इमेज इट इज द डॉटर सेइंग गुड बाय टू द मदर and All the mother right. is old and the daughter is young obviously and she is flying off to a different location Uh, okay. maybe out of uh, work some professional maybe in any work could be there so okay. we couldn't specify the reason but it is mother and a daughter waving at each other goodbye maybe thank you simran the mother the daughter saying goodbye simran ek aur cheez dekhiye look at the poem aapko kuch dikh raha hai is print mein uh image uh, if i look at this image particularly uh, right no look at the text please look at the text so it says driving from my past home to cochin last morning main aage chalu yeah yeah sure second page dekhiye ab aap bataiye form dekhiye poem ka kuch try kar raha hai kisi ko bhi agar kuch try kar raha hai dekhiye main bolu ji bilkul aap note kariye page 1 hai ye poem ka aur ye page 2 hai ek bhi full stop nahi hai oh Yeah. समझ में आया जो वॉट आई सेड लर्नर्स इफ यू आर लिस्निंग टू मी दिस पोएम इज ऑफ फोर्टीन लाइन एंड नोटिस देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल फुल स्टॉप बट इफ यू नोटिस कॉमर्स बहुत सारे दिखा यस यस इवन आई कैन क्लियरली सी इट हाँ जो मैंने बोला देखो देर आर सो मेनी कॉमर्स हियर ओपन माउथ हर फेस एशन लाइक दैट ऑफ अ कॉप्स uh then let's go to the next slide now uh next slide pe bhi aap dekhiye away i looked at her wan pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache my childhood's fear dekho wo pause kar rahi hai because her thoughts are breaking that is why i said in the beginning to look at a poem to read a poem we have to appreciate and understand the form now this form is known as blank verse there is no rhyme scheme in this poem there is no full stop in this poem the only punctuation marks there are two punctuation marks that are used one is the comma and second is this you know or the apostrophe my parents home okay uh, we are going to the next slide now yeah i would request all the people to read what is written on the left in their minds while i read it aloud 
Driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me, doze, open-mouthed, her face ashen like that of a corpse, and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. Now see, the simile is her face ashen like that of a corpse. The second time she was as old as she looked is not a simile. Now, while she was going to the airport with her mother, the poet notices that her mother seems to be in a dispassionate posture. She seems to be in a posture where she's not bothered about what is happening. She's not looking. Her mother seems to be dozing off or yawning. See, I saw my mother beside me doze. She was dozing off or yawning, probably because of fatigue or lack of interest in the drive. It could be two things. The poet has not told us. Either she is tired or she is not interested in the drive. The, poetly, the poet immediately compares her expressionless face with that of a corpse, a dead body, which shows her intense and emotional feelings. The other things uh, I would uh, appreciate that you must remember, this word beside. In English, there are two words. One is beside and the other word is besides. Now, beside means by the side of. Beside means by the side of. And besides means apart from. So, besides English, we also have to study science. Remember, it's always best to do language with literature. So, I'm now going to the second excerpt of this poem. But so, in the last extract, he says, and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. But soon put that thought away. So she removed that thought from her mind and looked out at young trees sprinting, the merry children spilling out of their homes. See, but soon put that thought away. In another poet, poem, Paradise Lost, Milton has said, the mind is its own place. I repeat, the mind is its own place. It can create a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven. So, what is our control? Hai. That is the message. So, she thought that her mother was old. She looked like a corpse. But soon she put that thought away. She was able to clearly remove the thought from her mind. The narrator tries to, I'm reading the meaning now. The narrator tries to divert her mind looks outside at the young trees and happy children bursting out of their homes in a spirited, joyful mood. Now, there is a contrasting image. The mother looks old. The mother looks like a corpse. The daughter is sad. The daughter is upset. But the moment she sees the young trees sprinting, uh, learners in the class, I would be very happy if you're able to recognize to yourself what is the mean? What figure of speech has been used in young trees sprinting? So there is a spirited and joyful mood. And also everybody just enjoy this word joy. Joy. Joy comes from joy, enjoy, joyous, joyful. Then there is joker, jocund, everything with the J-O is a lot of joy, joyous. All that means happy. The third excerpt, please, and I remember, I'm not using the word stanza because the poem has been written in one single sentence without a positive, without full stop. But after the airport security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at a wan, pale face, as a late winter's moon. Now look at this comparison. Pale face as a late winter's moon. This is a simile. And felt that old familiar ache, my childhood fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. And all I did was smile and smile and smile. Again, try and pay attention to this. Felt, familiar, fear. 
as a late winter's moon of course i told you is a simile but try and answer this question what could this be felt familiar ache now the explanation of this part of the poem after the security check at the airport she looked again at her mother's face pale and cold familiar ache my childhood fear the poet has always had a very very intimate and close relationship with the mother all daughters have that and has always felt the fear of being separated from her mother hence the fear is familiar the poet reassures her mother and herself that they will meet again at this point there's something i would like to share with you uh kamla das was born in 1934 this poem was probably written in 1954 so which means this poem is around 67 years old human longevity in india that time was a was at an all time low now human longevity in india with medicines and with other improvements in lifestyles financial status so at this stage in 2022 most people will not be afraid i am 66 but when kamla das wrote the poem in 1954 then that fear was there i lost my own mother at 56 but then what happens is that that fear phenomena is not today uh, in 2022 of course we have to observe all the covid restrictions there's no need to be afraid uh, may i go to the next slide please yeah ma'am before proceeding in with the conversation i would like to inform all our viewers that at around 3:30 we are still left by 30 minutes in this session if you have any of the questions all your questions are welcome in the comment box of ncrt official yeah ma'am you may proceed thank you simran ma'am now this is a brief summary my mother at 66 talks of the anxiety of the narrator of losing a mother due to waning health and loss of liveliness waning health means weakening health and usually waning is not used with health it is used with the moon the waxing and waning of the moon and this often comes with old age the poet accepts this truth and is is disturbed by her mother's failing health one second i'm just clearing this a uh, failing health on the one hand and her own duties and responsibilities on the other hand this powerlessness is touching brought touchingly brought out in this poem so the way she says see you soon amma and all i did was smile and smile and smile the sentiments experienced by the poet are fundamentally universal in nature the fearing the fear of losing a loved one is a theme the reader can identify with unfortunately for all of us uh december 2019 to this time we have all been struggling with with death with covid but yes that fear is constantly it's a constant human emotion my mother at 66 is based on the subject of advancing age and the dread of loss and separation associated with so advancing age is associated with separation unfortunately death the poet undergoes an excess of emotions when she sees her mother aging and feels the pangs of separation at the thought of losing her. and because we know it is kamla das who has written the poem and we know that it's a woman writer but otherwise the feeling of losing the mother goes with boys also the son also feels the same emotion it's not that girls are more emotional and boys are less emotional both men and women are equally emotional but of course here we know that it's the daughter she also seems to be feeling guilty of not being able to stay with her mother in her old age she also wishes or you know she feels sad about the lost beauty and youth of her mother the poem is written in a single sentence which depicts a single thread of thought that is the loss of beauty and charm and approaching death and decay so that is the reason why the poet wrote the entire poem in one single sentence without any punctuation marks sorry without any full stops there are a lot of commas which show you know her emotions going upside down 
Now, what is the significance and appropriateness of the title, My Mother at 66? The title seems pertinent as the poem is about the narrator's realization that the time has flown by and old age has descended upon her mother. So she realizes that time has gone and now her mother is old. The poem revolves around the theme of advancing age, the fear associated with and loss and separation. So the entire poem is about this. Now, what is the poem? What is the form? I said to appreciate any poem, you need to study the form. In the beginning only, I have said that the poem consists of 14 lines. Remember, 14 lines written as a single sentence. Now, this kind of poem, which is written in numerous lines in one sentence, is known as an enjambment. I repeat, enjambment. This poem is written in a single sentence, punctuated by commas. This highlights the stream of consciousness effect where one thought leads to another. So there is, the consciousness keeps changing. And this definition is very important that in verse, an enjambment is the continuation of a sentence without a pause beyond the end of a line, couplet or stanza. Stanza incidentally means stopping place. S-T se bhoat sare words hain. Agar aap note karna chahein to likh lije. Stay, stable, stationary. All these words mean to stop. And stanza comes from the Italian where it means stopping place. Stop also. Or incidentally, Hindi mein bhi wohi hai. Stay, sthan, sthal. That is, you know, all languages are the word, same. Anyway. Now we go to poetic devices. Uh, there is this very good book by M. H. Abrams, which I've given in the downside. It's called A Glossary of Literary Terms. And M. H. Abrams says, poetic devices are a form of literary device used in poetry. Poems are created out of poetic devices, composite of structural, grammatical, rhythmic, metrical, verbal and visual elements. Structural, grammatical, rhythmic, metrical, verbal and visual. And sometimes poets do take the liberty to break rules of grammar. The, a, a piece of poem does not have to necessarily follow all rules of grammar. Poetic devices are essential tools that a poet uses to create rhythm enhance the meaning or intensify the mood of the or the feelings. So these are what poetic devices are. Now, the question that comes to mind is, what are the poetic devices that have been used in this poem? First, we have alliteration. And remember, alliteration is not the repetition of letters. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds, just as in vowels, consonant sounds. So it is the repetition of consonant sounds in a line of a poem, my mother, that thought. I said, see you soon, said, see soon. And earlier on, I pointed out to felt that familiar fear, felt familiar fear. And although you may feel, you know, these are thoughts that occur to them, the thoughts occur to a poet. But after that, putting those thoughts into words in such a way that the piece of writing becomes poetry involves a lot of hard work, involves a lot of learning. And all poems, not just this poem, have to have a form. The other thing is metaphor. Now, a metaphor is a direct comparison of two things without the use of words like as and like, the merry children spilling, the trees sprinting. Similarly, it is the comparison of two things by using as or like, her face ashen like that of a corpse as a late winter's moon. So ashen like that of a corpse is similarly Late as a late winter's moon is a simile again. Personification. 
when we give human characteristics to animals or plants or non living things trees sprinting if you remember from daffodils they were dancing so daffodils don't dance they toss their heads they don't toss their heads but that is personification here it is trees sprinting the other simile uh, the the other poetic device that we, that has been used is repetition or refrain repetition or refrain is the constant repetition of a word or a phrase to enhance or create a poetic effect that is smile and smile and smile see you soon amma see you soon amma and all i did was smile and smile and smile so the smile um, is going slow you know when we recite it smile and smile and smile because she is moving away she is waving and just as we are moving so the smile is also disappearing because she is getting far off she is boarding the flight these are the important excerpts which we have for comprehension and remember i have purposely not used the term stanzas because these are not stanzas driving from my parents home to coach it last friday morning i saw my mother beside me doze open mouthed her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon try and answer these questions yourself where was the poet driving to we have the answer to simran ma'am would you like to answer where was she driving driving from my parents home to cochin yeah and who was sitting beside her her mother mother what did the poet notice about her mother that her face was a bit pale and it resembled like that of a corpse that is a yes. kind of comparison she tried yes. to make yes why did her mother's face look like that of a corpse because it was dispassionate no because it was ashen it had lost okay. color okay. you know ash ko hindi mein raakh kehte hain yeah. to budhape ki jo shakal ho jati hai find words from the passage which means sleep lightly dead body and felt these are questions from the textbook actually but similar questions a uh, sleep lightly would be so what would it be i would like to know it from you toes toes acha ek to doze hai aur people in the this thing ek to doze hai i saw her doze dead body is a corpse yeah felt is realized the answer is here the poet was driving from her parents home to the cochin airport her mother was sitting beside her now in cbsc remember even this is if this is a two mark question the examiner expects you for a two mark question boys and girls if you are in the class the examiner expects you to write four points for two marks now notice the four points in this answer the poet was driving from her parents home half mark to the cochin airport half mark her mother was sitting half mark beside her half mark so for this answer the learner will get to a point because if you notice and whenever you do your questions and your answers i am talking to the learners please i am not asking you to write this answer in point but remember where was the poet driving to the poet was driving from her parents home if you write from her home the parents is left and cbsc does not give quarter mark cbsc gives half mark only so the poet was driving from her parents home to the cochin airport to the airport no to the cochin airport and her mother where was her mother sitting beside her okay. what did the poet notice about her mother she noticed that her mother was dozing with her mouth, mouth open and her mother's face looked pale faded and lifeless like a dead body because she had grown old the word for sleep is doze the word for dead body is corpse and the bo the word for felt is realized even one of our viewers amamta sanjay hadri she has also mentioned the answers a doze and corps very good good girl <laughs> i have done this you know there are other words related to doze catnap means doze drowse means sleep 40 wings 
skip, nap, siesta, snooze, wink, sleep, repose, rest, slumber, bed, siesta. और अगर आप में से कोई नोट करे तो खाली wink मैंने कैपिटल uh, में लिखा है बिकॉज yeah. विंक का कनोटेशन वर्ल्ड वाइज दूसरा है वी वी शी इज विंकिंग एट मी बट द वर्ड विंक ऑल्सो मीन्स टू डोज ऑफ लेट मी जस्ट गो विंक फॉर अ लिटिल टाइम तो ये इन सारे वर्ड्स का ये है एडवांटेज सीबीएसई में जरूरी नहीं है वो स्लीप बोले ऑल दीज वर्ड्स मीन एंड अ सीएफ्ता इज एन आफ्टरनून स्लीप अ नैप इज अ शॉर्ट स्लीप इवन सॉरी a siesta is a summer sleep and a nap is a short sleep all these words can be replaced by slumber ne- next excerpt looked but soon put that thought away looked out at young trees sprinting the merry children spilling out of their homes isme ek cheez i would want all people to note young trees sprinting Y and T have been capitalized. Personification. They've been given proper names. Young trees sprinting. What did the poet realize, and how did she feel? What did she do then? What did she notice in the world outside? Find words from the passage which mean running fast, happy, moving out. Running fast. Anybody has written? Mamta, are you trying? Yeah, a lot of our viewers are trying. Yeah, you want to tell them? Uh, read out the answers. Yeah, is it uh, thought away? One of our viewers has written it. Uh, for when uh, running, running fast. fast? Yeah. No. So what is it? Sprinting. Okay. Free sprinting. Mary is happy. Spelling is moving out. I give the answers on the next slide, please. Okay. A mother was lost somewhere in her own thoughts. It pained her. So, what did the poet realize? That her mother was lost somewhere else. How did the poet feel? It pained her. What did she do? The poet removed her thoughts from her mother and began to look outside. जो मैंने बोला था. The young trees growing outside moved past as if they were running. Happy children were coming out of their houses. Sprinting is the word for run. Merry is the word for happy. And spilling is moving out. So our viewers could take a note of that. Even they can take the screenshot of these particular yeah, images. Yeah, kids, and I've got these very many words for happy. They can take as many screenshots that they want. Uh, the PPT I'll share with you. If you want, you can put it any. Sure. Like I was saying, jolly, joy, joyful, enjoy, joyous, joke, joke, and all these J O K words means happy. these other words which i have written here can mean happy may i go to the next slide please uh, yeah yeah please take as many screenshots as you want you're welcome it's for you only there are a lot of welcoming comments in the comment section they say that they are able to understand it clearly now thank you simran and thank you everybody what is the kind of pain and ache that the poet feels when the poet looks at the pallid the word pallid means pale P A L E pale, and incidentally, P A I L means bucket, an almost corpse-like face of a mother. A familiar, painful thought recurs to her. Recur is to reoccur. Possibly, she has lived with the fear all along. Time and aging have not spared anyone, and will not spare the child's, the poet's mother as well. Separation and death seem inevitable with aging. Why are the young trees described as sprinting, boys uh, and yes. girls? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. If we could move back to the first question again, we have a question regarding that in the comment section. Yes, please. Yeah, it asks us, uh, what is this fear associated with the advancing age? When people grow old, uh, like I said, this poem was written in 1954. But when people grow old, they are afraid of death. and everybody who's growing old is a that is why we going for an insurance with any nee, that's a fact you know uh, if you are a human being unless you are the buddha every each one of us with the covid striking everybody so for her she has constantly been afraid since childhood she has the the old familiar ache of childhood she was always afraid of losing her mother 
Have I answered your question satisfactorily? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very nicely. <laughs> we could move to the next question. Why are the young trees described as sprinting? The poet is driving to the airport at Cochin. When she looks outside, the young trees seem to be running past. With the speed of the car, they seem to be running fast or sprinting. Remember, sprinting means running fast. Yeah. The poet presents a contrast, her dozing old mother and the sprinting young trees. Now, words similar to sprint, run, race, dart, rush, dash, hasten, hurry, scurry, scuttle, samper. Please take as many screenshots as you want. This word, these are all these words which can be replaced. And it's not necessary that CBSC will always use the word running. CBSC can use any word and you should know. Please excuse me. You should know as many words as possible. Vocabulary building is the best exercise, I feel. Okay. Now, this is an explanation from the point of view of science, not from the point of view of the poem. Why do the trees appear to move fast when one is driving? When we observe nearby stationary objects such as trees, houses, while sitting in a moving train or car, they appear to move rapidly in the opposite direction because the line of sight changes very rapidly. This is the scientific explanation. Why has the poet brought in the image of the merry children spilling out of their homes? Because it has been brought out by the poet to present a contrast. The merry children running out of their homes in large numbers present a picture of cheerfulness and spontaneity. The image contrasts with that of the dozing old mother whose ashen face looks lifeless and pallid like that of a corpse. She's an image of age and decay. The contrast of the two images enhances the poetic effect. Why has the mother been compared to the winter's moon? The poet's mother is 66 years old. Her face, which is ashen, which is shrunken and ashen, looks like that of a corpse. She seems to have lost her shine and strength. She looks weak, wan and pale. I've tried to use alliteration in the answer. Weak, wan. She looks calm and easy with a dim luster like the late winter's moon. The comparison is apt and effective. What do the parting words of the poet and a smile signify? Now remember the poet's parting words are, see you soon, Amma. And her smiles provide a plain contrast to the old familiar pain and fear of her childhood. Her words and smiles are a conscious effort to hide her real feelings. The parting words, see you soon, Amma, give an assurance to the old lady whose ashen face looks like that of a corpse. Similarly, her incessant, her continuous smiles are an attempt to overcome the ache and fear inside her heart. See you soon. I have written some words, uh, some meanings in Hindi, if uh, students have an issue. Otherwise, you can take a screenshot. Uh, can I switch off the presentation, please? I wanted to share a YouTube link. Yeah, you, sure. You may do it. Uh, everybody? Okay. Till then, I would like to inform all our viewers that it's our particular session of class 12. And this session, we are discussing about an interesting story. Well, it is about appreciating poetry. My mother at 66 by Kamla Das. If you have any of the questions, we are joined in this session by our experts. Miss Jyoti. She'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. So do write to us in the comment section of NCRT official. Besides, here is our contact numbers on your screen. It is 8800440559. And this particular session is running on PME with their channel number 12. So we also have our mail ID for class 12. It is dth.class12 at the rate ciet.nic.in. Yes, Jyoti ma'am. Are you able to do it? Especially that between a mother and daughter. Is this the, the, poem, is the sound clear? This, yeah, yeah, it is clear. We can poem, run it again from the beginning. Is one of the finest examples of human attachment, especially that between a mother and daughter. The poem describes the pain and anxiety of the poet, the fear of losing her mother, 
due to the unforgiving reality of life is the screen clear death. yeah my mother at 66 by kamla das driving from my parents home in cochin last friday morning i saw my mother beside me doze open mouthed her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon put the thought away and looked out at young trees printing the merry children spilling out of their homes but after the airport security check standing a few yards away i looked again at a wan pale face as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache my childhood fear but all i said was see you soon amma all i did was smile and smile and smile sorry one second yeah and with that i would like to inform to everyone that we are left by the last 5 minutes in this session all your questions are welcome yes ma'am uh, i was wanting to tell you the fear of death also has a special word any unnatural fear is known as a phobia normal fear is not a phobia and unnatural fear is a phobia and there is this word known as thanatophobia which is fear of death is my screen visible yes thanatophobia is fear of death are there any questions any yes. any doubts yes there are few doubts let's have a look at them just in the beginning of the poem when you were about to discuss it there was this term pen name that this particular author she used a pen name to write prose in malayalam so what yeah. is pen name and uh, if you could know if you could tell our viewers that uh, why do authors or maybe writers use them uh, a pen name is a name adopted by a poet or a writer for a particular purpose okay uh, how many of you know can write who is rajiv hari om bhatia does anybody know who is rajiv hari om bhatia or does anybody know who was yusuf khan sahab who was yusuf khan sahab simran ma'am well uh, this reminds me of uh, one of the famous actors <laughs> dilip kumar <laughs> yeah. so dilip kumar becomes his pen name akshay kumar's name is rajiv hari om bhatia hmm. so a pen name is a name adopted by an artist for this purpose so when she wrote in malayalam she wrote as madhavi kutti and when she wrote in english she wrote as kamala das so a pen name is a name which is kept by people for this reason for artistic purposes the term is pen name the so, yeah, viewers have also answered in the comment section slightly you asked about yusuf khan so mamta ji mentioned that it's dilip kumar yes and <laughs> pen name is also known as uh, i write the word here nom de plume the english word uh, you know the moment you go out is going to be nom de plume let me type it i'm sorry writing it here chini aati hai nom de plume now this is again english huh? it's in french though a pen name is a name or a nom de uh, nom de plume is a name adopted by an artist for artistic purposes so people wrote yusuf khan akshay kumar nobody knew but uh, there's a very famous writer in english known as george eliot boys and girls in class the moment you know that i say george eliot simran what occurs to you who is george eliot george eliot is a famous writer but do you know that she was a girl and i that... knew it because i have studied about that okay. <laughs> but otherwise so, but see, yeah the name george eliot the name george is a boy's name yeah but she called herself george eliot because those days it was considered bad for women to be writing or women writing novels was not appreciated so she wrote under the pen name george eliot 
So Kamla Das's pen name was Madhavi Kutti. But for our knowledge, I'm telling you, when Kamla Das wrote in English, she wrote poetry in English and prose in Malayalam. So when she wrote prose, she called herself Madhavi Kutti. And ma'am, with that, I would like to inform you that we have the last one minute in this session. So, but I would still like to take this last question. Please well, take it. Ask oh, why there is a joy in reading poetry. Uh, because there's joy in reading poetry because you can get different explanations. Everything has different meaning, and you should learn to enjoy poetry. And it's not that you have to do literature to enjoy poetry. Yeah. Poetry enhances life. There is so much you can read in poetry. They say, which other subject will tell you the trees are running? Or which other subject will say, have you, anybody who said, uh, my favorite poem is, Aajkal to Tiger Chal Rahi Hai. But once upon a time, it used to be daffodils. If you remember anybody, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over whales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Such fun, you know. You can dance with the daffodils. <laughs> well, that was so beautiful explanation from your So I enjoy poetry, <laughs> but I enjoy everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You explained this entire concept, be it poetry or be about this particular story, so beautifully to our viewers. And Thank even I, it reminded me of my class 12th English text. You had this poem in your course? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've had this poem for a long time now. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the viewers who Thank have joined you. in with this particular session of English. And stay connected to NCRT. Namaskar. Namaskar. And thank you so much. I'm leaving her. Huh?